long last, we are starting off the Night Quest version of the Nightfall series. Night Quest itself is split into two sections. The Quest, which follows Bruce Wayne and Alfred as they pursue Dr. Chandra Kin solving and Jack Drake across the globe, or at least the Atlantic. And then the Crusade, which follows Jean Paul as he determines what kind of vigilante as bad is going to be, or has his interpret has an interpretation forced upon him by the system. All this works in Gotham. I'll also be covering some side issues of Robin, as Tim Drake's solo ongoing series starts in this part of the event and runs somewhat parallel. Catwoman solo ongoing is also happening around the same time, but it doesn't interface with the story in quite the same way. So I'll only be covering those issues. However, the search comes first, with two issues that are occurring parallel and a nightfall, and aren't even happening in a bad book, but are happening in the pages of Justice League Task Force, specifically issues number five and number six. Both these issues are written by the legendary Denny O'Neill, pencils by Salviento, inks by Jeff Albrecht, colors by Glenn Whitmore, lettering by Clem Robbins, and is edited by Ruben Diaz and Brian Augustin. We open at the airport on the island of Santa Prisca with a bunch of violent individuals preparing to go after Bruce Wayne's private jet. At the airport, Bruce and Alfred have disembarked, with Selina Kyle having left earlier off-panel. Presumably, which is up to will be covered in her own book, but it is not particularly relevant to the story at hand. The goons attack. Bruce stables a few with gadgets built into his wheelchair, and the timely arrival of Bronze Tiger helps with the rest. However, one gets away due to some freak clumsiness by Bruce. At the hotel, we learn that the one who got away has had a tracker put on him, and we also meet the rest of the team that Mark. Bruce Act Mar asked Martian Manhunter to put together. The unfortunate named character of Gypsy, who is not Roma, and who, but who modeled her look after racist stereotypes of the Roma, Ish, and Green Arrow. Bruce tells Bronze Chiger to scout the hacienda where the prisoner is being held, and after they leave, he radios the Batcave with an update. At the hacienda, Gypsy learns that the goons are waiting for a Mr. Asp, and that they're sending people with rocket launchers to blow up the hotel as the issue ends with that attack. The next issue opens with the aftermath of the hotel's demolition, with Bronze Tiger wondering if Bruce and Alfred got out okay. A couple of goons show up, point their guns at Bronze Tiger and Gypsy, and get beat for their trouble. We get a lot of this particular variety of two page spread in this issue that we have for this fight, with separate panels on the left, separate or separated panels on the left and right, and then a big unified panel in the middle. This works when you're reading this digitally on the uh, DC Universe app, and also kind of works on the comics page, though it does run into a problem if you're putting a whole bunch of story content in a chunk of the page that is potentially going to be obstructed by staples or other similar things. Um, so it's, and certainly it doesn't work as well on the trade because you have the seam of the page right there. It's it's all right, but it's definitely a case of where the layout of the medium comes up heavily. Now, Bruce and Alfred, they are quite all right. They have quietly relocated, are currently in camping in the woods. Presumably, if smartphones existed, Bruce would be submitting a negative review on, on Yelp. Room service was poor came in balcony rather than door. Hotel room was blown up by rocket launcher partway through the stay. Would not stay there again. One star. In any case, Bronze Tiger and Gypsy proceed with their rescue plans, only to discover the kidnaps ha kidnappers have literally released the hounds. Green Arrow links up with the two, and they wonder if that was really what, well, really was Bruce Wayne back at the hotel. Now, this does make me really appreciate modern comics where the members of the JLA generally know each other's identities to an extent to avoid nonsense like this. Gypsy steals a guard's lighter and sets some curtains on fire in the building to distract the guards and allow them to carry out the rescue. Unfortunately, their timing is off as Asp is arriving by helicopter at the same time. This all 
almost works. Arrow, Tiger, and Gypsy overpower the guards and get Dr. Kinsolving free. However, the bad guys have already loaded Jack Drake on Asp's helicopter, and he's in a bad way. So on her own volition, Dr. Kinsolving boards the helicopter. Uh, to be real about this, if Chandra wasn't there and gone along, they probably have just killed uh, Jack. So I understand this decision. She's a doctor. She is concerned about her patient and going with him will make sure that he is not killed. Though it would have been nice if they'd taken advantage of this opportunity to further hint, though, that what who they want is kin solving, not Drake. On Bruce Wayne's yacht, the team regroups with Bruce saying that the search, or rather the quest, is not over. It's just not going to continue in the pages of Justice League Task Force. This was honestly a nice kickoff to the search, and I like how this incorporates Bruce taking advantage of his connections that has as a member or former member of the Justice League. I wouldn't have minded if they found other ways to tie the quest into other books as a way of setting up hope. It get playing up the fact that Bruce has engaged in it has networked as being due to his involvement with the Justice League in its various iterations over time and has allies that John Paul doesn't have, has people John Paul can't, can't necessarily call on and having that as something of an equalizer for his lack of physical mobility as after the whole thing with Bane. But I also understand why they didn't do that because as this establishes, the number of hero, other heroes who knows that Batman was Bruce Wayne, or rather say Bruce Wayne was Batman, fairly small. Uh, Martian Manhunter knows. Clark Kent knew, but Clark's out of action. Um, I presumably um, Wonder Woman, Diana knows, but that's about it. And at this point in Diana's career, she is. Working a day job in a mall food court in Boston. So there's that. That, by the way, that, that ain't going to be showing up in uh, any of the Wonder Woman movies. At least that I'm aware of. They might do that. That'd be an interesting spin, but that's another time. Next, or Speaking of other times, next time we will see what John Paul is up to as we start Fade. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.